Hello everyone, welcome to BFSC Fisheries online class. Today we are going to study about the fish spoilage and the quality assessment. In earlier class, uh, you can watch on my channel the earlier video which I have uploaded that is the previous one in which I have uh, let you know about that uh, what are the causes that can cause the spoilage mainly. It may be uh, enzymatic, microbial or chemical. So uh, in uh, before this uh, video, I have already uploaded a video in which we have explained about the enzymatic spoilage that mainly happens in fish. Today, we are going to uh, watch what are the other factors like microbial and the chemical changes that occur in fish after the death because we are talking after the death only spoilage occurs. That's why we are mainly focused on the microbial and the chemical changes so uh, in fish when they are alive we know that they have a primary defense organ but after the death of the fish there are some factor or changes uh, which happens in fish that can cause uh, changes in spoilage in fish uh, so uh, we know that there are bacteria uh, they are present on the mucus layer, the skin layer, the intestine, everywhere there is. But they do not harm the fish because they have a defense organ with them, the primary defense organ. But after the death of the fish, these uh, bacteria invade the tissue. First is the microbial spoilage in which uh, the saprophytic bacteria like Pseudomonas, Flavor bacteria, Acinetobacteria, Aeromonas, and Morazella. These are the bacteria, bacteria that can cause the saprophytic uh, uh, spoilage in fish. So, saprophytic spoilage, and the other one we will be studying about the pathogenic bacteria. So, these uh, saprophytic uh, spoilage produce H2S gas that uh, there uh, the trimethyl amino oxide which is present in the fish body are reduced to trimethyl amine and it is converted into uh, convert the urea that is a non protein compound in fish into the ammonia the bacterial level rises when there will be a 10 to the power 7 organism per gram so bacteria level uh, rises in fish and there will be a spoilage. So I have uh, made a concise note that how we can study the spoilage in fish, uh, saprophytic bacteria when occurs in fish, what they can do. The other one is the non-nitrogenous compound they produce. Uh, no, we know that the non-nitrogenous compound they undergo urea, ammonia, etc. They undergo spoilage in fish and the ammonia which is a primary compound they are produced during the decomposition. So urea are converted into ammonia which is harmful for the fish. Formation of trimethyl amine oxide. Uh, trimethyl amine oxide uh, are present in fish and they undergo uh, during spoilage they are converted into trimethyl amine which is very much harmful for the fish uh, which may cause decomposition in them so if we are talking about the trimethyl amine oxide in marine flatfish and teleost they have low level of trimethyl amine oxide that is uh, 0.1 to 0.5 percent but if we are talking about the elasmo branch and the gadoids they will have the high level that is 1 to 1.5 percent in uh, elasmo branch the scromboid poisoning is the other case these we are uh, having a we are making a short notes here like uh, what are the spoilage causing bacteria what are the causes that can cause the spoilage causing bacteria so these are one uh, non nitrogenous compound the other one is the formation of trimethyl amine uh, trimethyl amine from, from the trimethyl amine oxide then the other one is the scromboid poisoning the scromboid poisoning also called as histamine poisoning uh, occur in the scromboid fishes like mackerel mahi mahi that is dolphin fishes they will undergo the scromboid fish poisoning what happens in this is the histidine uh, presence which is presence in the fish muscle of these scromboid fishes like mackerel and dolphin 
they undergo uh, changes like uh, they are converted into histamine which is a very poisonous for the fish spoilage and this may cause spoilage in these bacteria uh, these fishes then other one is the amino acid decomposition amino uh, acid decomposition is also a major problem during the spoilage that is caused by the spoilage bacteria the tryptophan is com converted into the indole the indole are uh, like we can use the indole compound in the quality assessment and uh, during the sensory method of quality assessment also indole component is checked to uh, check so to know the uh, spoilage bacteria are how much the fish are decomposed or it is spoiled so we have to consider about the indole content in that fish so there are method to understand like sensory method uh, like tori tori method and all we will be studying about all this uh, in our next class also and this indole compound are then converted into a compound known as hypoxanthine there can be uh, uh, different from spoilage bacteria there will be a pathogenic bacteria also present which are produced due to the contamination in fishes like after the contamination they will produce the pathogenic bacteria can be indigenous bacteria or it can be the non-indigenous bacteria indigenous bacteria are those bacteria which are occur in the aquatic environment and the non-indigenous bacteria are those uh, occur in seafood due to the contamination like a pathogenic bacteria we have already studied that they usually occurs because of the uh, contamination but they can be present in the aquatic environment too like indigenous bacteria for example the clostridium botulinum the vibrio species the aeromona species and the other one is the non-indigenous bacteria like salmonella species shigella e coli and staphylococcus aureus so these are the non-indigenous bacteria so these were all about the pathogenic bacteria in short the other one is the chemical spoilage. Now we have studied about the microbial spoilage, the enzymatic spoilage in the earlier video and now the other one is the chemical spoilage. The chemical spoilage are mainly because of the fish lipid that is mainly present in the fish. These fish lipid can be the PUFA compound that is present in the fish and these on decomposition they undergo fat oxidation and thus can produce a rancid flavor or it it is a flavor like which may produce a, a like they will not be bearable that kind of uh, flavor will be and this indicates that the particular fish is being spoiled so it is a uh, it is not so useful then after the spoilage lipid hydrolysis can be enzymatic hydrolysis with the free fatty acid or it can be the auto oxidation method means action of oxygen on the unsaturated fatty acid so there will be the two process of chemical spoilage it can be lipid hydrolysis or can be auto oxidation so hyperperoxide is converted into the aldehydes and the ketone in the next figure we have uh, in this figure like uh, what is seen here is of the detection method means how will you determine the particular fish in is spoiled so we are going to check the skin color the eye color and the gill color similarly this will be done uh, means uh, day after day uh, like if with the, in a particular day we have if we have checked then after five days after ten days they are analyzed by the sensory method territory method european method qim method there are several method to uh, detect these kind of spoilage so we'll be studying about that also in the next class and then the factor affecting spoilage if we are talking about these factor can be a temperature dependent factor or it can be depend on the species of a fish means like there will be different species like are spoiled if we are talking about the fatty fish they are spoiled much faster uh, than compared to the like which is not fed more so uh, because belly bursting we have seen that belly bursting also happens in fishes which is uh, fully uh, there is means like they are fed and due to that belly bursting happen because of the enzymatic changes in the uh, 
like due to the presence of digestive enzyme in more amount so uh, belly bursting can happen so there will be a temperature dependent factor then can be species dependent factor there can be many other causes uh, if um, we are more concerned here about the temperature because uh, temperature if we are increasing by 0 to 5 degrees celsius then uh, there will be high increase in the spoilage uh, so we have to mainly concern for the temperature we have to lower uh, the temperature so the particular method so to spoil uh, may uh, make a fish uh, not to spoil is to make the fish as soon as we are uh, catching it then we have to uh, make it chill so chilling is the process by which uh, we can avoid the spoilage in the fishes so chilling method should be done and there are other methods also which may cause spoilage they, that can be pro during the processing if we are not uh, mm, uh, following proper hygiene it may ca cause some kind of spoilage uh, so we have to avoid it also and transportation should be a very in a very proper way so these are the factors uh, in this figure i have uh, made a short uh, concise here I am concising here that how can uh, the chemical changes occur like trimethylamine are converted into trimethylamine oxide then dimethylamine these dimethylamine can be converted into mo mo monomethylamine or can be methylamine for uh, sorry for that and then methylamine is converted into ammonia and then it uh, ammonia is a compound that can cause this major problem during the spoilage so we have to avo avoid this conversion so we have to we can do what is we can chill the fish or uh, it should be consumed uh, day before it will be spoiled like after the catching the uh, spoilage uh, are going to take in the fish if it is highly fed and if we are not following uh, following a particular method to avoid the spoilage like rigor mortis may happen so we have to reduce all that so uh, this was all for today thanks for watching and if you liked my channel then please do like and subscribe we will be uh, having more videos uh, in the upcoming days so thank uh, thank you so much